we were at rule matching so i was telling you that uh, yeah so i was telling you that uh, you know let's take an example in your organization you have uh, thousand rules on your firewall and uh, if every time firewall is going to do the top down parsing on your rules it will add the latency on your packet processing which is not a good sign right and uh, we should have a smart way to you know quickly identify the rule created for that particular packet now that smart way is this these three things will be considered by the pan os when it will do the rule matching for you number 1 it is always going to use pre nat ips post nat zones in your rule if you have configured pre nat ips pre nat zones it means your rule will never take hit never you will see you will always keep on complaining i have created the rule but user is complaining that internet is not working because that rule is not taking hit you have not considered this thing in your mind then application set to any and url category set to any for rule match criteria so when we are doing the policy lookup when panos is doing the policy lookup it is going to identify the pre nat ips post post nat zones and your application set to any uh, url category set to any and then accordingly it will try to find out the rule quickly from this 1000 rule base another thing it will skip any rules with action not set to allow if the application or url category causes the match if your rule is taking hit because of the application id or url category and if action is not set to allow that rule will be skipped now third thing is very important if no configured rules match then default rules that is your inter zone by default action is deny and intra zone by default action is allow will match so what is inter zone and intra zone inter zone mean uh, between different zone to different zone so so from this topology you will be able to understand that if user is coming from trust and going back to the trust then this packet flow will become intra zone but if the packet is coming from the trust and going to the untrust then this will become inter zone so inter zone is by default denied and intra zone is by default allowed these are the two rules which you will see on your palo alto firewall by default okay so these are the uh, rule matching criteria which we have to expedite the security rule lookup right if you have the 1000 rules how we can expedite the process to identify the correct rule which has been configured for the uh, traffic flow if your rule action is allow then only we are going to get inside the session creation and installation stage otherwise your packet will be dropped and if you don't have any rule then it will hit the default rules and if it is inter zone deny packet will be dropped if you have configured the rule and traffic action is allow then you will get inside the create an installation session stage where you will take the session id from the free pool allocate the session id to this particular session and install it inside the session table so what we are going to do here we have done all the checks in our slow path now we are going to create and install the session so in your random access memory we have the session session pool because sessions are limited in palo alto firewalls you don't have unlimited sessions because that's the way they have defined their licensing and hardware model so that 
if you are a large enterprise you should buy a big box not a small one and if you if the organization is small then you should buy a 200 series box or 400 series box like that so they have a session limit so this free session pool is available inside the random access memory so let's say if i talk about virtual machine 100 vm 100 machine which we spin in our ESXi infrastructure or in our AWS cloud, Azure cloud, it is going to have the session of 2,56,000. These many concurrent sessions firewall can have. Concurrent means all the sessions active at a time. If you're not going to, uh, you know, if you have already subscribed to all the 2,56,000 session IDs, and if a new connection is coming up, then that particular connection will be dropped okay so this is the limitation associated with each respective firewall model be it physical or virtual now this session pool is going to have the session ids let's say the sessions are starting from one two three four five like that and it is going till two lakh fifty six thousand okay so now what will happen when we are going to create the session from the free pool we will get the session id I will walk you through this session life, life cycle tomorrow, how this is done at the hardware level. So we'll get the session ID from the free pool and we will allocate it to this particular connection. And when we will install it inside our session table, that this particular connection belongs to this particular session. And this is the session ID for this. Each session ID will have two flows, client to server, server to client, each flow will have a different flow key which we have discussed earlier reason being that the six tuples being used to identify the flow will be source ip source port destination ip destination port protocol and source zone so for client to server if source zone is trust for server to client the source zone will be untrust I hope I'm making sense. If not, then let me show you this packet flow here. So when the client is sending the packet, Deepak, I'll take your question. Just allow me a second to finish this. So when client is initiating the traffic, this is my sin. This packet flow is client to server. Packet is going from client towards the server from firewall perspective. From firewall perspective. This is important, guys. It might be possible that server is initiating the connection. Right. In that case, it will become uh, client to server for firewall because we are looking from firewall perspective. Whosoever is sending the first packet will become client from firewall perspective. And whosoever is responding to that particular packet will become server. So now <clears throat> this traffic flow is considered as client to server flow and the ingress zone for this is trust because this particular interface belongs to trust zone. When server is sending SYN plus acknowledgement packet, the ingress zone for that packet will become untrust. Reason being that ingress interface is one by six for SYN act, and this belongs to untrust zone. And that's the only reason we have two different flow keys. Because when you're taking hash, your source IP, source port destination ip destination port and protocol these values will remain same they are uh, i mean they will interchange you know it's like they will be uh, swapped but the values will remain same so when how do we take the hash so we have the uh, you know hash generators so let's say i have one value 10 another value 20 then 30 right so i will pass on these values to my hash generator and it is going to give me a unique hash basis on the algorithm being used. So let's say I have got the uh, hash like this. 
this is my hash value of this particular information. So when any of the value is going to change, the hash will change. And if hash is changing, it means somebody has modified the information. So that's why when your packets are returning from the server, their ingress, ingress zone is changing. So we need to have two flows. One is client to server, another one is server to client so that we can identify the correct session ID. I will explain it one again, once again, when we will see the SYNAC packet processing. I will show you this particular processing again. Then what we are going to store inside this session table. So user, if user ID, we are able to identify, uh, uh, you know, who is the user, your session state, your type, PBF rule, if any rule is configured, uh, action allowed, deny, timeout, URL category, NAT rule, application identified, ETL, security rule, layer 7 inspection is enabled or not. And if session has expired, what is the reason for the end? All these details will be available when you try to explore the details of that particular session ID. So let's say if I will, if I would like to see the session ID details and my session ID is 100, I can run the command in the Palo Alto firewall and I will be able to see all these details. In fact, inside the web GUI, you will be able to see all these details. In website, in Palo Alto website, you will see that right after this, they have shown that, uh, you know, then you will enter inside the fast path. But that is not the correct story. We have these much processings as well after creating the session. So once you create the session, in the beginning, I told you that uh, there are two types of tunnels. One tunnel is pass through tunnel, which is passing from the firewall. Firewall is not the gateway where this tunnel is getting terminated. And another tunnel is that that tunnel is terminating on the firewall. So if this is the pass through tunnel, and if you want to do the inspection, then you need to define this tunnel inspection policy. And here you will define everything source and destination zone, source and destination addresses, source user. And then firewall will try to identify which protocol it is using GRE, GTP, IPsec non encryption, VXLAN. Why only IPsec non encryption? Because if packets are encrypted inside the tunnel, then without security association database, you cannot decrypt the packets. GRE, we all know that there is no encryption inside GRE, right? So that's why we are only decrypting the tunnels, which I mean, we are only inspecting the tunnels, which do not have encryption enabled being passed through in nature. If in inspection is enabled and encryption has been done, then you won't be able to do the ins inspection on it. Okay. So mostly use case, if I will tell you, this is suitable for GRE over IPsec. So in industry, you must have seen this tunnel over a tunnel, right? So GRE over IPsec. So <clears throat> if you want to inspect the GRE packets, you can do that. Beneath GRE, IPsec is running. I mean, it's like this. We have the IPsec tunnel. And on top of it, we have GRE. So you can enable inspection on GRE. You can see what is going on inside. And you will see it is IPsec. If IPsec null encryption is there, then you can see the packets. If it is encrypted, then you won't be able to see the packet. And this is what is written here. When you try to decrypt, whether my maximum tunnel level reached, do we have more tunnels? Because when attackers, they steal the information, they create tunnels inside the tunnels. And your firewall will never come to know what is going on. In fact, they exploit the protocols. They form DNS tunnel. They form SSS tunnel. On firewall, you will see that uh, DNS packets are going on. But actually, it is a 
tunnel which is carrying the internal protocol traffic which could be 443 port 80 rdp session of your inside server i'll show you all of these things these are backdoor entries we create backdoor entry means hacker will never attack your surface from the front they will first create the backdoors inside your infrastructure and by using those backdoors they will get into your infra they will wrap the actual information inside the different protocol so that your firewalls your security devices uh, they won't be able to identify what is going on how traffic is how data is getting leaked okay and uh, once your maximum tunnel reached then only uh, you know we are going to perform the tunnel decapsulation and then it is going back to the first point that is zone protection and then all these steps will be followed again if you have configured the tunnel inspection all these steps right here in the slow path will be performed again and if you don't have this policy tunnel inspection is not there then you will directly go here inside flow lookup you will go here flow session state this thing right here what is your session state is it active opening discard closing closed accordingly then your packet will be sent to the fast path so we will cover up this thing tomorrow right how uh, session states differ from you know how it changes within the firewall from one state to another state what are the stable states what are the transient states and if packet is hitting the particular state of the session how firewall is going to respond so you can clearly see if state is free then packet will be dropped if state is set to opening active or discard we will reset the timer if it is opening and active then only we are going to inside the fast path that is your security processing otherwise if it is discard your packet will be dropped if it is closing or closed then you need to go back to the slow path again okay so uh, now a session could be in active state right but its state can change from active to discard if any threat has been detected so let's say being rohan i was doing internet surfing my traffic was allowed my session state was active in the firewall and suddenly i started uh, visiting malicious websites now firewall has detected that this session is becoming malicious so from active if configuration has been done to detect the malwares it will change my session state from active to discard and it will start dropping all the packets all the incoming packets being from the server or from the client so because see you need to understand things in a way see visualization is the key to understand all the things in a proper manner now what do I, what do i mean by visualization let's say this is me accessing a particular website over internet Now this server is malicious server. Accidentally, I have made the connection with this server. So I just Google searched facebook.com and I didn't notice the URL. It was not Facebook. It was something else. And I made the connection with this particular malicious server. So initially your TCP three way handshake will be done. Your TCP connection will be established. And right after that, this server will start sending you the malware files without your permission. It will automatically download the malicious software inside your machine. Now, if firewall is there in between. Initially, firewall has allowed the connection because Internet is open for you. But later on, firewall detected that, you know, malware is coming from the server now. So right away. It will block the connection. It will change the state of the connection from active to discard. 
so that these subsequent packets will be dropped right away i'll take i'll give you an example let's say my malicious file size is 64 kilobytes kb what is mtu permitted on yeah, internet they, they, they can, they it's 1500 bytes that is somewhere close to 1.5 kb now if a file size is 64 kb and one ip datagram is 1.5 kb which is having your ip header tcp header and then your data payload so 20 bytes 20 bytes 14 60 bytes of data so now this is somewhere around 1.4 kb so one packet is carrying this information so you need to break this particular big packet into different different segments and this is what your osi model says that whatever you are receiving from your application layer you need to create the segments right then you create the uh, datagrams out of it then packets then frames right so if you go back to your osi you will understand everything so it means 64 kb of information cannot be transferred in just one packet until or unless jumbo frames are enabled in your infrastructure but that jumbo frames we enable in data center only not over internet so on, over internet you can only transfer 1500 bytes of information till certain points but these days we can in fact send more bigger packets right it is supported that i will cover in later on lectures so let's say 10 packets are coming so if firewall will detect that these are the malicious packets the state of the session will change from active to discard and then it will start dropping the packets yeah deepak and jay one by one please tell me Hello. Yes, uh, my question regarding the tunnel inspection. Hmm. So tunnel inspection, we will manually decide which tunnel, like GRE, IPsec, we want to monitor or inspect, or uh, it uh, it's kind of like globally we can apply or. <laughs> See here when you are creating this policy, just remind me when we will do the configuration. I will show you this. So inside the policy, okay, okay. you 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 can define source and destination zone. You can define source and destination address. You can define the source user. So for your critical assets, okay. you know, for your web servers, uh, SQL servers, you know, your uh, front end servers, HTTP servers, back end servers, you can protect them, and you can monitor them that any hacker is not creating a tunnel from these resources. most vulnerable devices are your linux devices because hackers can easily create backdoor entries in linux uh, they can create the sss tunnels they can create the dns tunnels and then they can start actually i mean they will start leaking your information okay okay so you need to define okay. that where you want to apply this or you can keep it any 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 then this check will be applicable for each flow Okay, means it will go via slow path or fast path if there is already session. This is inside or... slow path only. This is only inside, inside slow, slow path. path. Okay, and every so, single time it will happen. See, if tunnel is terminating on the firewall, then we decapsulate it at ingress stage. Ingress stage. But if tunnel is passed through, okay, right? It is not terminating on your right. firewall. It is passed through tunnel. Oh, firewall. Okay. okay then okay. you need to if you want to if you want to inspect if you want to see what is going on on that particular tunnel then you can do this configuration and it will be inspected okay. inside slow path slow path okay yeah so that would be cpu centric matlab oh yeah very cpu centric you cannot enable it for any any your firewall will go down yeah deepak tell me रोहन जो हमारा ये सेशन क्रिएट होता है ठीक है वो हमारा नेट पॉलिसी लुकअप के बाद ही होता है ना तो 
राइट तो उसमें हमारा ट्रांसलेशन जो सोर्स आई और डेस्टिनेशन आई की हम बात कर रहे हैं तो वो जब नेटिंग वगैरह हो जाएगा मैं या नेटिंग नहीं होगा इन केस मतलब रूल के हिसाब से वो जो ट्रैफिक के हिसाब से तो वो सारी चीजें फिर कंसीडर की जाएंगी सेशन क्रिएशन के अंदर राइट नेट रूल आइडेंटिफाई हो जाता है कि कौन सा सेशन के लिए एप्लीकेबल है राइट बट दैट नेट रूल इज अप्लाइड इनसाइड द फास्ट पाथ व्हिच आई विल कवर अभी दिखाऊंगा आपको इवैल्यूएशन स्लो पाथ में होता है एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दैट नेट रूल इज ऑन फास्ट पाथ See guys, try to understand this thing. This is the first packet of the connection. So we are doing so much processing. But when subsequent packets will come, they will hit the ingress stage. Then flow lookup will be done, and we will come to know that we have the existing session for this. We have the session ID. It will directly go inside the fast path. It will not go inside the session uh, slow path. So these checks will be bypassed. So basically, this is the stateful firewall. and it ensures that tcp state is checked you know we are not receiving the synac packets or uh, i mean first packet should be always syn if it is tcp right uh, you are not receiving any uh, malicious traffic if you have configured the zone and dos protection you have the uh, security rule to allow this particular connection that's why you know when you are creating and installing the session you are taking the note of all these things here see which nat rule which url category which application which security rule so that when subsequent packet will directly go inside the fast path you need not to do this processing again so first packet processing could introduce latency but subsequent packets will be processed really fast for that particular connection and once i mean when you freshly boot firewall in your infrastructure you will see that it is introducing the latency another important interview question why you should not re reboot your firewall as your troubleshooting approach reason being that these cache which we have discussed here all these caches will be wiped off when you do the reboot and these cache tables they take so much time to get build properly because the more users are accessing the internet the more in a better way these cache are getting build they are getting refined as per the most frequently visited websites so we purge the entries least recently used entries will get purged and the most frequently visited websites applications will be placed inside these cache memories or you can say the cache tables if you reboot the firewall you are going to wipe off this information and when users will start accessing the internet for first 30 to 40 minutes your network will face slowness so whenever you are rebooting the firewall you need to tell your customer that boss i'll do the reboot first get me the downtime second thing you will see the slowness for first 30 to 40 minutes because all the cache memory all the url categories everything will be flushed from your data plane cache management plane cache right now i'm just talking about the packet flow i have not get inside uh, management plane data plane <laughs> okay so we'll see in upcoming lectures so this is another thing you should be cautious about when you are doing any restart of the daemon or reboot of the firewall Okay. रोहन एक चीज है यहाँ पर जैसे मेरी फायरवॉल सेचे में है तो वो सेशन जो रेप्लीकेट भी तो होते होंगे तो सेकेंडरी फायरवॉल जब जो टेक ओवर करेगी एज ए प्राइमरी रोल तो उसकी कैशी भी तो बिल्ड होंगी ना तो यार तो सारी जगह ना एच ए में नहीं होता ना वहां से सारी ब्रांचेस पे तो नहीं ना एच ए में होता है फायरवॉल की बात कर रहे हैं सिंगल फायरवॉल की बात कर रहे हैं डेटा सेंटर में ही एच लगाता है कस्टमर कोर चीज है जैसे सपोज करो रोनिक कोर चीज में फेसबुक डॉट कॉम राइट तो वो एक सेशन होगा तो उसके लिए एक जो पूरा प्रोसेस है ये स्लो पाथ वाला वो एक मेकिंग दिस कनेक्शन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम तो ये स्लो पाथ वाला उसके उसके फर्स्ट पैकेट के लिए उस सेशन के फर्स्ट पैकेट के लिए फेसबुक के लिए सपोज करो उसके बाद मैं यूट्यूब ओपन करता हूँ तो क्या फिर से सेम प्रोसेस होगा या 
because this is how i have developed my website that if you are visit if you are clicking on login button you will be redirected to our new website you need to make a new uh, tcp connection yeah, if you are clicking you objects it, to different domains then you will have a more number of connections if it is only within ng cloudx uh, yeah then exactly and that too within ng cloudx if i have uh, multiple java scripts for to perform different different action items you will make another connection with the server to get that particular javascript so whenever you will take the wireshark capture you just see source and destination ip and you will just do tcp follow stream you will see so many streams are there right so but, but this particular for, slow path mm -hmm. for, for, for uh, if you if we see the uh, rfc standards uh, for many browsers if you're going to open a open up a new web page typically opens up a uh, minimal number of connections based on the number of objects getting downloaded see that was the uh, web 2.0 do you know ah, what okay. web we are using right now okay okay go on go on yes 1.1 or 3.0 sorry are 3.0 yaar so अभी आएगा डेवॉप्स वाला बैच आएगा जिसमें मैं ये सारी डेवलपमेंट और कोडिंग वोडिंग सब सिखाऊंगा राइट सो देयर आई विल शो यू ऑल दीज थिंग्स व्हेन वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द डेवॉप्स सो यू नो व्हेन यू डिजाइन योर वेबसाइट वन हम्म हम्म हेलो या या माय क्वेरी वाज लाइक व्हेन when we initiating a connection to a particular website you are talking the, about the redirection for which there is a uh, multiple person initiating but my query was like when you are initiating a first connection to a, a particular website the, uh, there is uh, at least four to five connections which a user machine initiate uh, for that particular ip see that not about that, redirection that, only to the that, particular that ip address per yeah. but uh, they yeah, i am coming to that point only i was about to explain just do one simple activity guys this is your laptop connect your laptop with your home router beat wifi yeah. or lan cable okay now turn on the wireshark capture on your laptop and open your browser and visit the home page of your router let's say it is http use http because you will be able to see the uh, plain code of the website as well 192.168.0.1 capture this stream and in the wireshark just analyze how many tcp connections were made to load this basic web page is it 1 is it 2 is it 3 4 5 6 you will get your answer and whenever you are interacting with the website clicking on login button and then after login if you are navigating here and there then how many connections are building and getting tear down so whenever our tcp connection will be build and if your traffic is flowing through the firewall for that new connection first packet will always go through the slow path just do this activity you will get your answer sir ye net stack command se bhi check kar sakte hai na ha kitne sare connections bane hue hain dikh jayega ye karunga ye sab main cover karunga aage it is just that abhi examples mein de raha tha so i used to cover all these things when i used to teach in tag ये सब मैं पढ़ाता था बहुत बेसिक पे जाके चीजों को 
सो दैट आपका वो जो माइंड सेट है नी माइंड सेट यूर कैरिंग इट शुड ग्रो इट शुड ग्रो वर्टिकली एज वेल एज इट शुड ग्रो हॉरिजोंटली पूरा 360 डिग्री का व्यू आना चाहिए दैट बीइंग अ नेटवर्क सिक्योरिटी इंजीनियर और बीट एनी वेयर इन योर डोमेन व्हाट यू आर डूइंग यू आर डूइंग एवरीथिंग फॉर योर एप्लीकेशंस एंड हाउ योर एप्लीकेशंस आर वर्किंग दैट इज रियली इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज बीइंग डन फॉर द एप्लीकेशंस इन एंटरप्राइज नेटवर्क एवरीथिंग इज डन फॉर द एप्लीकेशंस सिक्योर योर एप्लीकेशन सर्वर्स secure your data and your user should be able to do their work flawless for internet users your applications are crucial hotstar hotstar ka network kitna bada hoga amazon ke andar if something goes wrong with that particular network hotstar will go right so try to think everything from the application perspective and how i was able to you know uh, enhance my skill set because i have done everything on my own this ng cloudx it has been built by me i am the developer mai karta rehta hu coding jo bhi karna hai mere ko cloudflare i am using it to protect my resource over internet this is hosted on aws and then ng cloudx has multiple flavors aapko wo ek website dikhti hai now i'll show you us website ke flavors dekhna abhi so when you go here first of all when you are hitting ngcloudx.com you are getting redirected to dot in because you are sitting in india who is controlling this you are not able to open up my international website because you are not coming from outside india your ip address public ip address is coming from india that's why you are automating getting re redirected to ngcloudx.in right and when i use tor browser which is bouncing my source ip right it will show to the net that i'm coming from a different country and then i will be able to open up my ngcloudx.com which is my international website so here the courses are in dollars so both these websites are wrong design mm -hmm. i have booked so both yeah. ek second ek second like, just a minute let me finish so... let me okay. finish so both these websites have been designed by me i know my application flow now when you are visiting this particular website you will see all these things right if you will click on login just keep your eye here if i will click on login you will be redirected to a different website where you can log in you can enter your mobile number and then you can access your courses and you can see your courses this this is nothing but the application web view the application which you download in your mobile this is the web view of that particular application right so you can just do simple things you can just uh, visit my website take the varsha captures you can analyze another thing is when you will do ns lookup for my website you will see ip addresses are changing for your locations as well for dot in for dot in you will get this particular ip which might be same for all of you but for dot com it will be always different because it is getting protected by cloudflare so we will cover that as well and that's the only uh, you know uh, way of i mean that's the only ideology behind creating this particular live training bundle everything is connected in this course first we are teaching you all the firewalls then load balancer then wireshark then linux then your waf so that you get the holistic overview what is happening in your enterprise network as well hamara to bhi bahut chota network hai but still you will get the holistic overview that how your enterprises are securing their network sir so, yeah, i LTM hope i'm GTM. clear ltm and gtm dono load balancer hi hai hmm nahi 
एलटीएम मॉड्यूल अलग है जीटीएम मॉड्यूल अलग है जीटीएम एसएम है क्या एसएम का मॉड्यूल जो है वो है क्या जीटीएम हां तो इसको कवर करेंगे ठीक है इसको सुमित सर कवर हाँ। करेंगे डिटेल में अब डेबी अब पूछो आप कुछ पूछ रहे थे हां सर मेरा क्वेरी ये था कि सर जैसे लाइक माय क्वेरी वाज लाइक व्हेन यू आर ट्राइंग व्हेन वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सेस योर ग्लोबल वेबसाइट through some mm-hmm. vpn ip like let's say we have installed a proxy in our machine and try to access so will that be open or not if your vpn gateway is uh, hosted outside india then it will open outside because Haan. that that because that vpn gateway will be doing nat for your traffic okay so then it will open if your vpn gateway is hosted within india and your public ip is becoming indian ip then it will not open you will be automatically redirected to the indian website so who is like uh, monitoring this this ip configuration gtm module of your load cloud balancer cloudflare web cloudflare web okay, okay. i'll 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 tell you i'll tell you the enterprise topology now so how my network is working and how things work in enterprise network so let's take an example this is my application server hosted in usa then you will have multiple application servers to cater the load of your users so you will place your load balancer here your load balancer here to cater the uh, load on your different different application servers then you are connected to firewall which is having the internet access then now on this load balancer you can also have waf module because in f5 we have different different modules right ltm gtm waf so uh, you can have uh, waf module as well here or you can have a virtual appliance of waf just like 40 web waf or barracuda waf or you can use cloud based services like i am using cloudflare so this is the cdn content delivery network a big network which reduces the uh, you know the access time of your websites and it also pro- prevent the attacks on your websites okay so this cloudflare is monitoring the connections and whatever rule because i'm using the cloud uh, waf so whatever rules i have configured in this particular cloud waf they are getting implemented so if users are coming from us they will get to the server which is hosted in us if users are coming from india then they will be redirected back to the server which is hosted in india make sense so cloudflare is uh, doing these redirections so we have created the yes, dns records now. and in dns records you have multiple records canonical name records c name records text records mx records in fact this integration which you see we you must have seen that we use ms teams so the entire integration of this office 365 i have done it and you can see that my domain is there ngcloudx.com so ye sab bhi maine khud hi implement kara so i know how to configure the things and how it will work so i'll try to cover as much as i can so that you will understand your enterprise network now the only problem with with your job profiles is like you are restricted to particular domains You don't get holistic overview. कि यार चल क्या रहा है, चीजें चल कैसे रही हैं. You don't know, you don't get to know about it, right? So if you, uh, you know, get to know about it, what are the technologies we are going to use to develop these applications? How these these things are working? Then you will become a good engineer. So just a minute, guys. Somebody's at the door. I will. Be-